After my last video, I am sure you got yourself the most wonderful pot of pork confit. It's probably patiently sitting in your fridge, waiting for all the wonderful things that will happen to it. If you have no idea what I am talking about, the video on how to make pork confit is in the description below, and today we're going to turn it into three different dishes. Our first dish is a green salad with a poached egg. This is inspired by Salad Lyonnaise, but instead of bacon, I'm using crisped up pork confit, which I think is even more delicious. Our second dish is a pressed pork sandwich with melted aged cheddar, Dijon mustard, and pickles. This one is inspired by the Cuban sandwich. And our last dish is the main course of black beans, roasted peppers, crispy pork, and all sorts of yummy condiments. There are not going to be any measurements in this video, just like it would be silly to tell you how many grams of butter to spread on a piece of bread. It is silly to tell you how many peppers to put on your beans or how much dressing to put on your salad. It is your job to figure it out for your personal taste. Fill a skillet with water and start heating it up for your poached eggs. Crack as many eggs as you want into a colander to drain the runny white. We've done poached eggs so much on this channel, you should be an expert by now. If not, watch this video. <laughs> to make the croutons, remove the crust from a chunk of bread. If possible, bread that's stale. Chop it up into very little pieces. Large croutons really bother me. I find them tough and distracting. I want the pieces to be small enough so that every bite of the salad can benefit from their gentle crunch. Melt some butter in the skillet set of a medium heat. Add your bread, stir it around, and then leave it alone until it browns. Stir and leave it alone again. If you realized you were too stingy with butter, you can add more at any time. You want your bread to feel like it's frying, not drying up. When it feels crisp and looks brown, take it off the heat. Since there'll be lots of rich components in our salad, I want to use veggies that are crunchy, spicy, and minerally. In other words, radishes and fennel would work better than, say, cucumbers and tomatoes. I also like a ton of herbs. Today I'm using tarragon and parsley, but you can improvise with whatever herbs you have on hand, as long as their texture is pleasant in the raw state. In other words, Dill would work, but sage would not. Remove the stems and give your leaves a coarse chop. Although you can use any lettuce mix, I believe that this kind of salad really needs frisé. It's airy, curly, and crunchy. To me, it's the best salad green in the world. Normally, I would put some shallots into the salad, but I used them all up for my confit by accident. So I'll add a little very thinly sliced red onion. To make the dressing, pour a little vinegar into a bowl. I'm using apple cider vinegar today, but red or white wine vinegar would also be great. Add some salt and a dollop of Dijon mustard. When the mustard is completely dissolved, start adding the oil a tiny bit at a time, whisking constantly. I'm using extra virgin olive oil, but I hear that some chefs like to use a neutral oil, like canola, to reduce the bitterness. It's completely up to you. This doesn't taste bitter to me, but I'm very tolerant of bitterness. We all experience it differently, so play around with oils to see what you like. Same with acidity. Given all the rich components in the salad, I want a very sharp dressing. But if you want a mild dressing, use lemon juice instead of vinegar. The amount of oil in your dressing should be roughly two to three times the amount of vinegar. Add the croutons to your salad a little bit of dressing, some salt, and toss with your hands. That's the only kitchen tool that will successfully separate all those radishes without bruising the lettuce. Keep adding dressing and salt until it tastes just right. Plate up your salad and move quickly to get the eggs and the pork done. Salt the water, pour in your eggs, and set the timer for four minutes. While they're cooking, set another skillet that is either nonstick or well-seasoned cast iron of a medium heat. If you're using a cast iron skillet, you should plan ahead and preheat it on low for about 10 minutes, since it will take forever to even out the heat. 
add the pork in a single layer. It's okay if this layer is somewhat crowded and cook without disturbing until the first side is crispy. Meanwhile, our eggs are set and we can separate them. When your pork looks like this, give it all a stir and cook without disturbing again. Our eggs are looking good and they can come out onto a paper towel. Our pork is looking good and it can come out into a bowl. And we are ready to put it all together. A little bit of black pepper, some more herbs, and some crunchy salt, like moldens of Fleur de Sel. You know how Eskimos have 18 words for snow? I need 18 words for crunchy to describe the salad. Pork, croutons, radishes, fennel, frisee, they are all crunchy, but in a different way. <laughs> and they are all infinitely better coated in this creamy egg yolk. Open a good bottle of Sancerre, serve an apple glut for dessert, and you'd be hard-pressed to find a better lunch. A few words of advice on multitasking, because this dish has three things that need to happen last minute. The egg, the pork, and the dressing of the salad. Frisee doesn't wilt quite as quickly as other greens. That's why I felt brave enough to dress the salad first. But if you're new to poaching eggs or crisping up the pork, you might want to get those done first and only then dress your salad. The eggs can be drained and kept warm at 140 degrees. The pork gives you a lot of flexibility. If everything is done and you need it to crisp up quickly, crank up the heat. And if you need to buy yourself time so that you can dress your salad or finish your eggs, lower the heat. Pickles are an essential component of the sandwich because their tartness balances pork's richness. I have a little tip for you for slicing round vegetables that roll all over the place. Just look at this mess. If you angle your knife a little, they'll fall off better and won't roll around as much. Of course, that requires a really solid claw grip, so make sure you tuck in your fingertips. My favorite bread for press sandwiches is ciabatta, but of course it depends on how your bakery makes it. Mine makes the crust very crisp, but thin. This ensures that it's not too tough after I press it. Mix about two parts mayo and one part Dijon mustard, or whatever ratio you like. Crisp up your pork just like we did for the salad. Wipe out the skillet with a paper towel and add a little butter. Spread both halves of the bread with the mayo mustard mixture and place the bottom half into a pan set of a moderate heat. Top it with pickles, a very generous amount of crispy pork and cheddar. I'm using cabbage seriously sharp. Cook until the bottom bun crisps up a little and pop under the broiler for a minute or just until the cheese melts. Unfortunately, my broiler has been broken for months because there are no parts. If you've tried to repair an appliance this year, you know how fun it has been lately. Since I was forced to make do without a broiler, I didn't put nearly as much pork or cheese into the sandwich as I usually do because I wanted to make sure my cheese would melt enough on the stovetop. But it would be way better with more pork and more cheese. So imagine that my cheese is all melted add the top bun, the foil, and a heavy skillet, and cook for about 30 seconds. Flip, add a bit more butter, press, and cook for about a minute or just until the bread crisps up. Flip it back onto its bottom and enjoy! This is one of my favorite lunches to make on skiing trips. It takes five minutes and tastes great. I know that cassoulet is a classic, but personally, I don't like it. The first three bites are good, and then it's too monotonous. So I'm not looking to France for my pork and bean inspiration. Instead, I'm looking to Latin America because their pork and bean dishes have way more texture and flavor contrasts. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees with the rack in the lowest setting. Cut off the bottom and sides of peppers and discard the cores. Slice your peppers into strips. 
Smash a few garlic cloves, but leave them whole. We're just using them to infuse the oil. Arrange the peppers and garlic on a baking sheet. Sprinkle with salt and drizzle with olive oil. Don't be shy with oil. I have four peppers here on a half sheet and they needed a quarter cup of oil. Place in the oven until brown, about 20 minutes. Stir and return to the oven until you get more brown spots, about 10 more minutes. Now that looks like a beautiful pepper. Put some cooked beans in your pan. They can be home cooked or canned. If you want to learn to cook dry beans, I'll give you a link below the video. Add some pork juice. After sitting in the fridge, it should look like jelly. Heat everything up on moderate heat. I like to add a bit of pomegranate molasses, but you can go for anything acidic like balsamic vinegar. I should have used that wonderful pork fat instead of butter, but I thought of it too late. <laughs> oh well, next time. The pork juice will give your beans incredible creaminess and flavor. Crisp up the pork the usual way and put it all together. Beans, peppers, pork, sour cream, and salsa. I'm just using some store-bought salsa verde. This dish is just begging for some freshness and crunch, so let's stop it with red onions and cilantro. Just like the salad, this one has a lot of fun textures. This dish is all about creaminess and silkiness. Obviously, these three dishes have infinite variations. For example, you could roast some finely diced root veggies, stir in the crispy pork, and top with a poached egg for a killer hash. Or you could toast some corn tortillas and make tacos. I hope this pork confit will help you feed your friends and family over the holidays. And I can't wait to see all of your creations. Here are more culinary tutorials for you to check out. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.